today. A mixture of all things good and aromatic, from a fun artsy playhouse in Edmond to a cool accessory store in Tulsa to food trucks, fresh air, and bamboo in Guthrie. Travel with Triple A's Discover Oklahoma. Hi and welcome to Triple A's Discover Oklahoma. I'm Jennifer Reynolds. And I'm Dean O'Lally. Today we're coming to you from the Linnaeus Teaching Garden. It's adjacent to the Tulsa Municipal Rose Garden. And we're here for a couple of reasons actually. Number one, it's absolutely gorgeous here. And it's number beautiful. two, it actually smells really good. And that's perfect for our theme this week, which is potpourri. We have a potpourri of stories for you. For example, a place here in Tulsa that makes the most delicious smelling candles. We'll tell you about that in just a minute. But first, we're going to go to a place called Unplug It's Playhouse. It's a great place to take the kids to play and to paint and do ceramics. And who better to send there but our big kid on the staff, Jeff Roberts. Behind these doors, the secret to get your kids weaned off of that Xbox and PS3. Unplug It. So what made owner Katrina Yules come up with an idea like this? Walk me through how you came up with this idea. I think this is really cool. Well, I would be on the phone or working from home and I would suddenly realize that my boys had been playing video games for more than a couple of hours. And so it was an expression I came up with to tell my friends or coworkers, oh, I've got to go. I need to unplug my kids. So later down the road, when I came up with this business idea, it just made sense to call it Unplug It, to represent all the things you can do while you're unplugged. Where did the idea of like arts and crafts come into it? Well, I've always enjoyed arts and crafts myself, but of course as a working mom, you know, the years slip by and uh, you don't have the time to spend with it like you used to. And then once in a while when my boys got a little older, three, four years old, I thought, oh, I'm going to take them to a ceramic studio. And I realized after about 10 minutes that probably wasn't such a good idea. <laughs> and uh, so don't I painted. Touch for the yeah. Don't touch. <laughs> I know. Don't touch. Don't touch. Look with your eyes. Stick your hands in your pockets. And and they enjoyed it. But they enjoyed it for about ten minutes, and then they wanted to get up and run around. And so I had worked downtown for a long time, for over twenty years, straight out of college. And when the company was sold, um, I had an incredible opportunity to start my own business and I wanted to do something that I really enjoyed and something that I felt like I would have uh -huh. enjoyed as a working mom, a busy mom with my kids, you know, some bonding time with them. So when you're talking about how the boys would, you know, do well and then they need the, the need to run around, is that why you came up with the idea too of the indoor playground yes, here as well? Yes, definitely, definitely. And also I think free play in a safe environment because as a naive parent, I went to the park with a book thinking I could sit there and read my book while my kids played on the play structure. Yeah, that worked well. And then they disappear <laughs> behind a pine tree and I'm like, and I love the parks, don't get me wrong, but it's kind of like you really cannot right. relax uh, as much as you'd like sometimes. You know unless you're on the jungle gym with them. Well, yeah, and a lot of times you're too tired to be on the jungle gym. Well, sometimes them. you are, and, yeah. that, and that's the reality of it. Uh, so, and so we did design it with all the walls low and the windows to the playground for a reason. So a mom could actually paint and uh, her child could paint, leave it, go play a little bit, come back. So you see a lot of back and forth with the kids. The kids can do ceramics, paintings, Play-Doh, puppet shows, but I want to go play. <laughs> Wolf Horse is strong with these little ones. Here at Unplug It's we're showing you so much you can do with arts and crafts. My favorite, the paint and easel. In fact, I'm so excited. I'm going to create some magic here. You guys don't know I have this hidden talent. Wait till you see the magic I create. It's time for the big reveal. I think it's a masterpiece. I call it the Monodino. So Da Vinci I'm not, but you know it's pretty darn good. Remember you can make and take, book your next birthday party, or just come on down and do your own puppet show. And I'm Puckett, I'm Jeff Roberts, bye-bye.
Unplug Its Play Studio has a very informative website. You can find out about group activities, take a look at their calendar, workshops, and more. Just go to the website, which we'll link you to at the Discover Oklahoma page at TravelOK.com. Wow, I don't know what to think about that. <laughs> Jeff, how about for your next story, we we'll send you hang gliding over a swamp where you're going to wrestle some alligators while chewing on tinfoil. How's and that? Poison ivy. <laughs> That's, right. That's perfect. <laughs> you know, that place looked really fun. And our next destination is a fun place, but it also has an element that smells really good. It certainly does. And it's a place where you can also weave together older objects to create new ones. It's called the nest. Owner Alan Suzor describes his store, The Nest, as, quote, found objects woven together to make a home. When I walked in, the word that came to mind was eclectic, and the very first thing everyone notices, or to be more specific, smells, would be... Definitely the candles. Um, right away when they walk in, that's the first thing they smell. They smell it walking up to the store. Uh, we make our own candles in-house, so that scent is always in here. But we also offer, when you're done with the candle, to bring it back, the empty container, because we pour them in-house, we give you $4 off your next candle. So it encourages this whole idea of recycling and repurposing, which is also such a crucial part of our business here. Alan says the candle sales have just gone through the roof. In fact, he's now making so many candles, he's ordered new, bigger equipment to handle the increased orders. But for now, he's still making candles like this, which is like a home version method. First, it goes into a slow cooker on a very low temperature. Um, 165, 165 degrees Fahrenheit is ultimate for the throw of the scent. So when you add the scent to the wax, that gives you the best standing unlit. You know, have you ever walked into a room and smelled a candle and it's not even lit? At that temperature gives you the best throw, they call it, of the scent. So it doesn't even need to be lit. So once the wax is at that, you add your oil, essential oils, whatever the oil is, be it fur or any of the scents, and then you pour it into a container with a wicket. And he doesn't put dye in those waxes. It's a combination of beeswax and paraffin, so it tends to burn a little cleaner. There's also two pounds of wax, so they end up being large, long-burning candles that have become immensely popular. The front part of the store is retail, but the back is referred to as a think tank slash work area. It's here Alan and his staff, Lauren Henson and Adrian Duffy, come up with all kinds of ideas. There are woodworking tools to paper arts to painting, and they try to figure out what to do with all the various pieces. It's all part of the art of designing, that eclectic hodgepodge of found objects that are just woven together to create something else. And even with the new project po products that I'm buying, I try and find a second use for them, even as new objects. Like, this is a bud vase, but I love it on a desk with pencils and flowers. Do you, do you know what I mean? So it's, it is a bud vase, but why can't it be both? Do you know what I mean? So even as a new object, I don't have to repurpose it in any way. It's already just giving somebody else a different way of thinking about something. And different is what you'll find at The Nest. It's a wonderful home gift store. No jewelry, no clothing, nothing like that. It's all gifts and accessories for the home in particular. So now my objective is a good price point for a home gift. So a lot of people, um, stores sell furniture and larger pieces, and I'm all about the accessories. For more information about the nest on Cherry Street in Tulsa, just go to the Discover Oklahoma page at TravelOK.com. Well, our potpourri tour around Oklahoma is not finished yet. We're going to head to Guthrie next, where we will talk about bamboo. That's right. It's just a small part of our potpourri show, but you need to stay with us as AAA's Discover Oklahoma continues right after this. On the road, one never knows what lies ahead. Indubitably, almost every week, one encounters bad form from Sunday drivers. Sheer rudeness begets the occasional fender bender. Precisely why we have insurance from AAA. Here, here. A name drivers can trust. Especially good ones. Especially great ones. Cheers! Sit alone and talk. Watch a hop. Making crazy circles in the sky. You know we belong to the land. And the land we belong to is red. Everybody say, Hey, 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 it's just frozen rain. Can we just please pull over? There's going to be dents all over the car. What are we, storm chasers? 
This is insane! Until there's a climate control knob that actually controls the climate, See, thank you for agreeing with me. there's the next best thing, insurance from AAA. Welcome back to AAA's Discover Oklahoma and our Potpourri Show, which is a collection of fun, different destinations all over the state that are unique and a great time. They are all indeed that. But this next destination I actually found very fascinating because mm -hmm. I don't know about you, I didn't know a lot about bamboo. Don't run into it so much. Yeah, <laughs> before I did this story. But with that, let's head to Guthrie to the Bamboo Satori. The Bamboo Satori opened officially in the late 90s. Linda Finley is the owner. Her husband started growing bamboo years ago and after he passed away, she has continued to work with the 35 different varieties of bamboo grown here. It grows like no other plant in this country. Uh, it's, it's hard for us to wrap our heads around how it actually does grow because we're not used to something that stays green all year. And uh, it, um, it's an extremely useful plant. It's peaceful, it invites the birds. It's a green plant. Not only is it green, it is green. Linda has always enjoyed gardening and taking care of plants, so working with bamboo seemed the perfect fit. There are an incredible number of ways one can use bamboo, with the biggest ones being for landscaping and to put up privacy fences. Even Linda's earrings are made out of bamboo. There are yellow bamboos, green, variegated, and more. I have bamboo that grows from six inches tall to 60 feet tall. Uh, that's that the six inch one is not ever going to get any taller. The 60 foot one, once it reaches 60 feet, it's not going to get any taller either. They, they just they have a maximum height, a maximum diameter, um, a minimum low temperature that they can tolerate. Um, and so there is a lot of differences. Linda sells bamboo to people all over the country, and when you visit the Bamboo Satori, one of the things that hit me is just how peaceful it is out here. And while this is a peaceful and tranquil place, Oklahoma's climate can be a challenge. The cold probably affects it more than anything. The strong Oklahoma north winds can burn the leaves, but bamboo is amazingly resilient, so those leaves will replace themselves. And there really aren't too many pests or diseases that bother it. Bamboo does not need a lot of water, so um, that's good. Uh, it does not like to have its feet wet, so it prefers a more drier soil. And, um, but the last two years of this drought has hurt it. Uh, a lot of it that's come up this spring was not as big as it should have been because of the drought. It didn't die, but you know it just wasn't quite as healthy but it's recuperating quite nicely with all the rain we've had lately. And finally, I also learned just how bamboo is connected and when it grows, it truly takes off. You made a comment earlier. Uh, you said, all I really do is chase the bamboo. What, what did you mean by that? <laughs> well, it runs. So if something's running, you have to chase it. <laughs> well, and you know, I don't have any of my bamboo contained out here. So that's why I have to chase it. We know where you can find out more about the Bamboo Satori, and we'll link you to their website on the Discover Oklahoma page at TravelOK.com. From a fun place for kids to paint, to creative home decorating, to the uses of bamboo, we've been all over the place so far, but we are not done. We are far from finished. In fact, up next, one of Tulsa's top tourist attractions. We're off to the Philbrook when AAA's Discover Oklahoma continues right after this. I was sitting behind an SUV at a red stoplight, and I guess the light wasn't turning green, green fast enough for her, so she puts her SUV in reverse and backs right into my new car. I'd called her insurance several times and they had never heard of her. We recommended that she go ahead and turn the claim in to AAA so that AAA claims adjusters could take care of her. I paid my $500 deductible to get my car fixed and I didn't ever expect to see that money again. I didn't want her to have to be out $500 because it wasn't her fault. So that was the only question. A lot of times if there is no insurance coverage, it's hard to get the other party to pay up. Two months later, I had a check in the mail from AAA for my $500. So when I had given up on it, they were still fighting to get my money back for me. 
She said, guess what, I got a check in the mail. That was a good feeling for her and it made me feel good too. They've really shown me that if I ever have a problem that they're gonna, they're gonna help me fix it. Welcome back to AAA's Discover Oklahoma. This is our Potpourri Show, just an assortment of fun and interesting destinations from all over our state. Let's see, Webster defines potpourri as a mixture of unrelated objects and subjects, etc. And that certainly fits, but in our next destination, when you go, everything fits perfectly. To begin with, it's housed, at least part of it, in a 1920s villa that's just gorgeous, and it sits on 23 beautifully landscaped acres. Of course, we're talking about the world-renowned Philbrook Museum of Art. What makes Philbrook, you know, specifically interesting to Oklahoma is not just the collection, which is first rate, but it's the combination of the collection and the gardens. You know, we have over 20 acres of beautiful gardens here, the historic home owned by Waite and Genevieve Phillips. And when you combine all of those different elements, it makes for an experience that you cannot find anywhere else in the region. For art lovers, there may be no better experience in Oklahoma than Tulsa's Philbrook Museum of Art. The collections of Renaissance and Baroque art and sculpture is considered one of the finest in the world. But so is its outstanding collection of Native American art. It's also becoming quite well known for its collection of modern and contemporary. From the 20s through the 60s, common household items took on extraordinary shape and color. It leaves a lot to see here, but every museum has its star attractions. I would say in the museum with the collection we have uh, William Bouguereau's The Shepherdess, which is one of our most famous pieces. We have Rodin's Adam, which greets you as you come into the rotunda. These works of art are the public face of the Philbrook, but behind the scenes, the Philbrook shines like a bright green star. Inherently, people think museums are kind of energy users on a high level, and, and we are because we do have to keep the temperature and humidity control to protect the artwork. But we've tried to go outside of that and make sure we're doing as many things um, to be green as possible. The Philbrook recycles most everything from office paper and cardboard to bottles and cans. It may not sound like that big a deal until you consider just one event, the twice annual Wine Experience fundraiser. So that was our first year to actually recycle the event and it came out great. Uh, we recycled uh, 1,720 pounds of glass which, you know, we probably missed a few bottles here and there, but that was, that's pretty amazing. Even the gift shop takes part, featuring fair trade items. The environmental efforts here are just the icing on the cake. The beautiful gardens at the museum are living works of art, and the Tempiedo has been the scene for marriage proposals and nuptials for generations of lovers. The works of art here at the Philbrook span centuries and spawn sparks of illuminating imagination and wonder, no matter who you are, or what your age, or where you've been. But Phil Brook offers something very special, uh, whether you're in Oklahoma City or Tulsa or uh, Durant or you know, <laughs> Guymon, uh, you should take the time to come here and visit it, even if you've never been here before. A lot of people came here when they were children, have great memories. Some people come here when they're 80 for the first time, and they still have a wonderful experience. The Philbrook Museum of Arts opens six days a week and different exhibits are always opening there. So to plan your trip to the Philbrook, find out what's on the calendar and get information about tours by going to the Discover Oklahoma page at TravelOK.com. Some people may find it hard to believe, but guess what? We're not finished yet. You knew we couldn't do a show without talking about food. Food trucks and fresh air, Neff said. We'll explain when AAA's Discover Oklahoma continues. He's been our insurance agent for the last six years, uh, but the year before that, he was the best man at my wedding. Asked him if I could quote his auto insurance, to which he said, yes, but you're gonna have to beat the company I've been with for forever in order to get it. I didn't think uh, they'd be able to. So I, I took the opportunity to quote it, and I know I was able to save him about $600 a year. Man, I was just like, boom shakalaka, like, are you kidding me? He actually said that on the phone, boom shakalaka. You know, saving money with AAA means food on the table for my family. Even after he saved us tons of money, He's looked at our policy over the years and, and helped us make changes to save even more money without us asking. We offer the best of both worlds. Um, we have uh, great cus customer satisfaction through the level of service that we provide uh, and combined with an amazingly low rate. You know, as a parent, as a husband, having insurance uh, is a safety net because life happens. I know that AAA is gonna take care of us. I don't have to worry about it. AAA is gonna be there, Levi's gonna be there. They're gonna take care of our needs.
welcome back. AAA Oklahoma makes this show possible and does a lot of other terrific things around our state. Here's a look at today's AAA. Hi, Chuck May here with AAA Oklahoma. There's nothing worse than getting stranded on the side of the road. Whether you're locked out, have a flat, out of gas, or need a jump, you can count on AAA to be there for you. One of our newest features, which you won't find offered by any other National Motor Club, is the AAA Mobile Battery Service. AAA's battery service comes to you in any metropolitan area of the state for free battery testing and diagnostics. Our trained technicians will check your vehicle's charging system, starter system, battery cables, and can even detect if there's a drain on the battery that's causing failure. If your battery needs to be replaced, it can be purchased at a special member discount and installed on the spot. Plus, all AAA battery service replacements come with a six-year warranty and we'll recycle the old one for free. Just one more way AAA keeps you on the go. To learn more, visit AAA.com. AAA for the ones who matter most to you. I do believe, Jennifer, that the planets have become out of line because so far we've not mentioned food in this show. That's got to change. <laughs> Good thing that Abby Curran is getting ready to take us to a place in Tulsa known as the Guthrie Green. This is an urban garden and a performance space that's part of the Brady Arts District in downtown Tulsa. There's a park that features a stage. They have beautiful tree-lined paths. Mm -hmm. And one of the fun activities is to catch Guthrie Green Food Truck Wednesday. This is a great time to get outdoor food, fun, and more. Every week, people flock to downtown Tulsa in the Brady Arts District for Food Truck Wednesday here at Guthrie Green. It's the hottest happening for food. It started out simple, just inviting some food trucks to come out, and it was such a huge success um, that we've just made it a mainstay. It happens every Wednesday, and people come out when it's hot, and we think people will come out when it's cold, so we're just going to keep it going year-round. Wednesdays from 11.30 a.m. to 2 p.m. in the Brady Arts District of Tulsa, you'll find food trucks galore to satisfy any craving you have for lunch. Yummy hot spots include the Pita Place for Mediterranean, the Worst for Bratwurst, Smoke for locally sourced American cuisine, and many more options to choose from. A lot of the local restaurants have formed food trucks. We've got Andalini's Pizza and Local Table, um, and the Raw is brand new to the Food Truck Wednesday uh, family. And then we also have just a lot of people that this is what they do. Um, Lone Wolf Bon Me is a huge hit. Uh, we get hundreds of people that come out for Lone Wolf. Walt and I were immediately drawn to Lola's, a most darling Airstream nestled on the corner that we just knew would have great food to try. I came home and um, bought the first Airstream I saw on Craigslist and uh, gutted it and um, started working on it. it. took about nine months, six, six to nine months to get it going to where we wanted it. But it's a full coated commercial kitchen and uh, it's a lot of fun. With so many food options, how does one decide? Each food truck offers a variety of options and their own special menu will have your taste buds singing. People meet their friends out here. Uh, we, have, we try to have live music every week during Food Truck Wednesday. We've brought in a lot of local bands and artists. It's no surprise this Wednesday event has taken off like it has. There is something for everyone. Add in the ingredient of the beautiful location of Guthrie Green, and this is one successful recipe. Well, this is the best part of our week right here. We love um, what they've done downtown with Guthrie Green, and um, it really and truly is the best part of our week. It really is just kind of like a fun break in the middle of your day to come out and see your friends and see your family and listen to some music, eat some really good food that you can't get anywhere else, and uh, you know, it just puts you in a better place for to finish off the rest of your day. From Tulsa at Guthrie Green's Food Truck Wednesday, I'm Abby Curran. You can find out about everything happening at Guthrie Green. Just go to the Discover Oklahoma page at TravelOK.com. That's our show for this week. We're glad you came along. We really also want to give you a special invitation to come and visit the Linnaeus Gardens here at Woodward Park in Tulsa. It's set up to help you come here and get some ideas for what you can do in your own yard, plants that are really specifically good for Oklahoma. It's absolutely gorgeous. If you've never been here, you need to come here very soon. And we also want to thank you very much for watching. Next week's show is all about 60 miles or minutes from Oklahoma City or Tulsa. We're going to go to the Vault, a great place to eat in Tulsa, a diner in Ada that's an institution, a Rose Rock Museum in Noble, and find some beautiful jewelry in Edmond. Hope you'll join us. So until next time, remember, there's always something to discover in Oklahoma. Production vehicle provided by the Oklahoma Ford Dealers, official partner of the Oklahoma Tourism and Recreation Department.